Good. So welcome to Aging, uh, Aging with Attitude, our monthly um, spot on Arrow FM. Great to have you here today and with us. I've um, got a guest this morning, uh, Davina Hinari Kuru from Faiora. She's going to be talking to us about her program. And of course, we've got the usual Susan as well <laughs> with Kia us ora. today. Yeah. Um, so, how was the weekend? All Blacks won? Yeah, awesome. We were actually in um, Wellington and got up early to um, catch up with that, um, even though it was our weekend away, you know, sleeping and all. Um, but that was, it was great. It was awesome. Yeah, I, I'm pleased that the All Blacks won because um, we know that when the All Blacks lose, that there's a lot of depressed people around there, yeah. around the country. <laughs> and that can we relate cry. to, yeah, well, that can cry also relate to um, <laughs> the wives being um, abused. Mm. Yeah, it's a known fact. Wow. You know, if they have lost against Namibia, there would have been a, a huge public outcry and things wouldn't have been going right for our mental health. Mm. And so we have to consider that it's just a game. It's just the game. It's great when we win, but it's also okay when we lose as well. So we've got to remember that mm. it's just a game. But anyway, so uh, yesterday I went to Pukaha and... Caught up with uh, <laughs> Richie McCaw, so that was great. He was running for the Westpac team. They had a relay yesterday at Pukaha. Uh, Pukaha uh, was one team, Westpac was another, um, Rangitane was another. There was a fourth team, and I don't know who that team was, but they had to run 4.2 Ks up the loop and back as a relay, and it was a great time out there. There were about 12 storeholders out there. Uh, it was an open day, um, and they're beautiful whare out there. Um, I'm not sure of the name, uh, but there's a, a carved meeting house there, and there's also a complex out there. It is fantastic. And I would encourage those who are um, have organisations, check that out as a venue, uh, as a conference venue for yourself, because um, it is beautiful. The kitchen, it's a commercial kitchen. It's great. Big spaces for the dining room, and I think there's around about... 10 units out there. Oh, wow. As well. To yeah, sleep over. To sleep mm. over. Wow. Some are doubles, some have got. Um, en suites. Yeah, en suites, and there's about five. One of the had five bedroom, uh, five bunks in it as well. So, you know, it's, mm. it can be a great place if we choose to utilize it. That's right. If we choose to utilize yeah. it. We used utilized that a couple of weeks back, actually, if I ordered it. Oh, cool. For um, team bonding and outreach area. Okay, so what did you do there in your team bonding? So we went out there. Um, the lady that took us was Olivia. She facilitates. She owns her own business, uh, Pipiri. Yeah. And, um, yeah, she facilitated that area of uh, Kotahi Tanga, uh, Whakafananga Tanga within yeah. outreach. Oh, nice. So we just stayed out there all day and did our bonding. Uh, we had a um, caterer on site to do our kai. And, oh, nice. Yeah, it was good just to be near the Ngahiri, actually. Yeah. And, and to bond. Yeah. Because we... We lack that sometimes in within Fiora. I think within any organisation, yeah. you've been together eight hours a day from Monday to Friday. Yeah. It's like far away from far no. So mm. yeah, it was good. Cool. What's some with some of the activities that you once um, did to help you bond together as a team? Uh, we did um, we did teasers like um, <clears throat> how we would bond, ha ha what mm. it looked like to bond, um, and what the individual would want if they wanted to bond, okay. like new kaimahi, yep. come into that area, how would they? How would that look to them yep. coming in from the outside, being first and foremost a new kaimahi? Yep. So yeah, it was good. It was a good day. It was facilitated really good, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was enjoyable. It was probably one of the best um, bonding sessions Fiora has ever put on. Actually, oh wow, yeah. Usually mm -hmm. we have them at Nukutai or. And that's good, but this was outstanding because it was in a marae that um, no one had really done wananga on. Mm. So we booked You it. would have been one of the first. Yeah, that's right. Oh, beautiful area. The kitchen's not big, but it, it does it. Yeah. And it does everything. You don't have to move very far to get everything. You know what to is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know what it's like in the kitchen, so yeah. And that's great. Mm. That's great. And especially in terms of being in the ngahere. Mm. Yeah, listening Absolutely. to the birds and being a part of that wairua that's created mm. there. Mm. I have to have a big shout out to um, 
two of my cousins out there, uh, Tipene mm, Kawana Jordan. and Kao Rongonui, uh, Rongonui, Rongonui uh, mm. who are the carvers. Mm. I, there was another carver there. I'm not sure his name, but kia ora to you, whoever you are, you know who you are, uh, for the mahi that you did out there mm. in the houses. Rawene. Mm. Yeah, that's what I wear. And so even the po uh, that are around the ngahere, um, uh, and they've got different uh, plaques to mm. say what they are. Yeah, yeah. And sa bit of ranga, some knowledge about what this is all about. That was just absolutely fantastic. And you could do a treasure hunt or orientation there. I oh, could do a lot there. Yeah, mm. it would be great. It would be great. I also found out that those at um, Tipene and Carl also um, carved... Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like moinga. Yeah, yeah. That, they do. That is, in some of the work I've seen, some there they are, they are beautiful. Yeah. So I don't know how you get in touch with them for that, um, but I know that they they do that. Yes, they yeah, do. I know that they do that. So if you're out there and you want uh, another place uh, for a conference, um, get in touch with Puka and use the facilities that we have here uh, in the Wadarapa, especially um, that one because it is so beautiful. It is. It is so beautiful. You'll be amazed, I'm sure, uh, when you go there. They just haven't got a wood box. <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking to the designer yesterday, he said to me, what do you think, um, what is your feedback about this? Because it was cold yesterday out there. Mm. Mm, it was cold. <clears throat> and there was a fire there, but it wasn't going. Oh. And I said, well... You designed, helped design the place and all these project man. said, yeah, and I went, well, you need a wood box, bro, because there's no need to put wood. Mm. It looks nice, the fireplace, bro. <laughs> it looks <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that space, that space, you know, you can see that space being used um, as an intimate space um, for a small group mm. around there. Mm. And especially if you're doing things like um, Pudako stories, mm. you know, that, that'd be magical. Toasting marshmallows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got a honey pit outside. Oh, I think nice. they do have a honey pit outside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they yeah. might be the go for. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. It, it's and it's supporting local um, to put money back into. Mm. into yes, the, use it. Yeah. You know, we've got this resource. Mm. You know, we need to use it so that, um, and this, not only older people, you know, adults, but also the younger that the schools mm. need to go out there too and be a part. Of that, I was. Um, there was one store there with um, J and L. Oh. Yeah, and I'm going. Huh. What were they selling? Firewood. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I asked him, "What's up with this?" And he goes, uh, "We're talking about, and we uh, educate our contractors about the difference between a kariaria and um, the kahu." He says, so they can identify the birds out there. So if there are oh, wow. kariaria out there that are in where we are going to uh, um, forest, he said, then we um, we make provisions for mm. them so that we're trying to build up their numbers in the area. Wow, that's amazing. That was great. Mm. Absolutely great. And as you know that other people um, who you know have other things doing in the forest mm. actually care about that as well. And some of the things that they're doing um, to revitalise the the livestock out there, so that's great. You know, we're going back to your program, um, David. So, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you do at uh, Faiora? Akatavi ahau i mahi o i roto i Faiora he kaiarehi ahau i te ko a ropu Faiora. So my name's Davi. Um, I work within Faiora. I'm a kaiarahi, which is a navigator. Uh, my program, I work as solo, so um, it's to do with kaumatua tanga. So it's the ingo o tera is um, whanau ora. So yeah, I walk along so, uh, kaumatua. Okay, so those who don't know what kaumatua, what is a kaumatua? Um, elderly, An elder person? someone of a respected yep. nature. It's been there, done that, um, holds a lot of esteem in our hapuri in our community. Yeah. Um, someone that's lived experience. Okay. So in terms of, um, say, age, um, what would the criteria be, p criteria be around age? Because like for Susan and I, <coughs> the criteria we have for Kui and Koroa are 55 for Māori and Pacifica. What about for yourself? Uh, we look at the um, age of gold card, 65. Okay. We will take on um, younger if 
situations. The that's right. Yeah. If it suits the person yeah. and if they want to come, because not many Māori want to be co even <laughs> when they're 65, they don't, they'll even take when the gold 80. car, they'll take the gold car, yeah. but they don't want to take that, um, that label of co so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that because mum's the same. Mm. When she was, she's saying, I'm not going, I'm not doing that. Mum, no, my job is in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. You're right, mum. That's our job now. Yeah, <laughs> it took her a job. long time to move to. <laughs> it mm. took her a long time. So yeah, there is a bit of, Resistance, mm. um, but we've got to respect that, though. We do, <laughs> we do. Because I yeah. know when you get a little bit older, uh, not far away, remember? <laughs> you might be a bit resistant <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, they do have to want to come on board. Mm. Yeah, like everything, you know, we have to, um, we have to do what they would like. Mm. To Just a be bit of respect, day. Eh? Yeah. Mm. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, what do you do on your program? So my um, program um, comes from um, Bano Ora in Waipareira, Auckland. Okay. So we're subcontracted down here and we surrender uh, to Takari Mai Te Ata. Okay. So um, I go in with the kaumato. I have that cordial first of referral or how, how the process works with referral. So <clears throat> it could be self-referral, it could be a whanau member that are wanting them um, to have interaction and get more sociable skills and okay. just feel their isolation sometimes because a lot of kaumatu got isolated yep. very much so in COVID yep. and they were trying to interact back into the community but it was harder for them because you know everyone was just so worried and hyped up on their COVID mm. that they didn't know whether it was good to share or, or go, out. go back into that you know yeah. back into that circle one law yeah. mm. so yeah so that's what I, I do I walk alongside them I go into their whare and I see if they're all good within their whare. So it could be, if they're renting, I uh, have a look at requirements, if it's up to legal standard, mm. uh, government standard, and if they have all those stuff within that place, if they don't, then we might have that coordinated all with landlords uh, okay. about trying to get it up to standard. Yeah. Um, if they own their own home, um, maybe they can get assistance with smaller stuff, uh, whether it be like, um, I don't know, door stoppers or okay. just to keep the draft out. Because most of the Aokaumatua okay. have whatever they have mm. and they've accumulated. Some of them have got too much, actually, mm. you know, for their little flats. So, yeah, so it's just the majority of the time I find that um, Kaumatua just want a good old uh, kōrero yeah. for a good old hour. Yeah. So I want to, want to go back to the referral process. Um, so in terms of... Because you work for Fai Order, mm. and Fai Order is like a medical mm. centre, is it only Fai Order, those who are registered with Fai Order, or is it any kaumatua kuia or Ka koroa? Any, any kaumatua. Nice. Uh, mostly around Māori or Pacific Islander. Yeah. But we will take on, I will take on anyone that, that needs okay. needs assistance. A, a lot of them will just ring up for, how do I get into this programme? Can you tell me how do I get into a program where I can do harakiki. So okay. I just point them in the same direction. Okay, Might so you take, facilitate take them, that. Yeah. Okay, so, so anyone can be a, uh, referred to your program. Can you give me your, the number for how they might get in contact with you? Or they just ring Fire Order yep, office? Yeah, they can ring Fire Order and they can um, leave a message up there if I'm not in or I'll carry a cell phone number and it will come straight down to me. So my um, extension is 840. Okay, so ring Fai Ora. Uh, what's the number, Fai Ora? 0800 for Fai Ora. 0800 for Fai Ora. Okay, extension 840. 840. And it'll go down to you. Mm. All right, uh, and if it doesn't, if I'm not at sitting at my desk, it will come through to my um, cell phone. Oh, great. So if you're out there and you want to be referred, remember Davi talked about isolation, and I know that, uh, like for us, that age concern, it was interesting with those uh, older people because what we found, and... The, we had a survey, a national survey, is that those who are between 65 and 80 didn't go out much. Mm. Those between, this is after COVID, 80 and older, they were out all the time. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't really know what the difference was in their thinking, but that was what they found nationally, mm. is that yeah, the, the younger Kui and Koroa uh, didn't want to go out. Where the older ones were going, no, this is, we're all good. Wanted to be that social butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Getting back to being... Because, again, um, and for my understanding, is that when people are socialised, their health does improve. Absolutely. Their health does improve. And so, yeah, if you want to um, 
get out and about, ring up Fayot or even ring Aging Sin because we're about sending people around to be a part of a, a accredited visiting service. If you can't leave home, you want to speak to that, Susie, a little bit more? The accredited visiting service. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so it's for people that are isolated at home. We had a lot of families ringing up during COVID um, to look at that process because they couldn't get out. Um, Lindsay... Um, Bucks? Yeah, at work. She does uh, the referral. She'll go out and um, visit those people and make sure that they fit under that criteria because it's not just an extra on top of someone that does socialising anyway. It's something specifically for people that um, can't get out and um, yeah, can't have those conversations because we know that people love to mm. um about anything, and especially when you're isolated. And it's a great... Ref I find a lot of people um, that we deal with, um, old, the older... Um, you know, there was so much wisdom and so much, you know, going on in their lives. They like to talk about their past and it actually helps them deal with their situations at home now. So it's um, great to have someone in there. I think they can also um, do, um, with their accredited visiting services, um, you know, like do puzzles or play games because of a lot of, a lot of um, even Monopoly and stuff like that, it's all about, um, yeah, having conversations and doing stuff as well. It keeps, their, keeps your mind busy. Um, we all know that um, maths is a really good thing, but not all of us are good at maths. Eh? <laughs> but, you know, just, yeah, having those, um, people asking questions, asking how they're feeling or how are you doing today, all those sorts of things make them feel that um, they're inclu included, um, which is what we really need, and it shows a bit of respect as well. So, yeah. David, yeah. do you remember um, when we were growing up playing cards a lot? Yep. And that's how we were taught a lot of our math skills, yep. eh? mm. counting skills and darts. Mm. And fish. Yep. Yep. You know, finding pears and stuff. Patterns. Like that. Yeah, patterns. It's yeah. great for your brain. Yeah, I don't see that happening too much um, nowadays. You don't see it really at all, uh, mm. considering children always had a table yeah. for poker and your kitty would go to the marae. Yeah. That's you right. don't see it. You don't see it no more. <laughs> no. So they used to go toe and toe with the, the kitchen area, yeah, you know, the did. cooks and then they'll be gambling and making that little pootie on the side for the marae. But yeah, yeah. And it was, as I said, for me it was interesting because um, my my nans there was there was a few of them. Um, part of their job was to sit down with us and teach us those those skills because. Not only those skills in terms of maths and counting and all that kind of stuff, but also talking about um, their past. Mm. You know, what was it like when they, this is how we did things. Yeah, and for me, um, and I'm not sure whether it's similar to you in uh, in your circle, that that mātauranga is still there, but it's not being tapped into. Yeah, yeah, it's still there, but I don't know. If there's enough money to sit on the poker tables these days, <laughs> hey, to get that kitty for our, our marae. But it's still there, that mātou ringa that we grew up with, yeah. and, you know, gambling was a good source yeah. of uh, giving back to our marae. Yeah, yeah. And so um, part for me is hearing those stories, mm. you know, hearing those stories of the, the old of my queer and their queer mm. in Koroa, you know, what it was like then and how they navigated mm. those harsh times, you know. And I passing remember. on the knowledge too, mm. and, yeah, and, and the stories to pass on to the next generations. It's, yeah, yeah, um, a great topic. Because I remember just down the road from where uh, both Davi and I lived uh, was Sophie's, it was, it was a kuro of ours, but there was an apple tree there, mm -mm. and we used to go down there and pick apples because they made those apples made really good apple sugar cake, oh. <laughs> really good. So part of it was about the picking. Part of it was about the learning how to make the sh uh, short cake. Mm. And a part of it also was um, getting together to share of the bounty that you got. Mm. Yeah. And that was cool. Even we used to go out um, in the creeks and catch eels. Yep. Crawlies. Eels. Yep. Crawlies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what do you do? Swim all day at yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lie on the road to get yeah. dry. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't no cost towel. anything, eh? Didn't cost nothing. These days people are wanting, you know, to yeah. take the kids out to things that are costing money and you know, when you when you get back to basics you learn so much fun mm. doing I mean, crawlies used to creep me out. But <laughs> um, you know, just um, having fun, eh, and creating memories and things like that is awesome. Yeah. Uh, it is awesome, and mm. like when we used to get um, go to get some eels, you know, you learned how to drive them. It was, it used to look funny sometimes when, uh, 
would come home, the line, the clothesline, yeah. used to be full with eels. <laughs> <laughs> All boned out, ready to go, ready yeah. to smoke. And then we would learn how to, of course, prepare them, mm. then how to smoke them. Mm. Again, it's passing out more yeah, knowledge. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The process yeah. Mm. of catching a tuna and then what to do after. Mm. What to do after. It's a waste of time catching and you don't know what to do after. Yeah. Mm. Hey, mo, yeah. mo, koi. Yep. That's right. That's right. Country Calendar had a really good. Did anyone watch that last night? No. They had a, um, They did um, some, some people doing eeling, um, and then the drying, and then the smoking. And yeah. Then, yeah, it was really amazing. Yeah, mm. and delicious. Mm. Yeah, and part of that too is you learnt um, how to work. You learnt about um, maramataka, uh, and you you learnt about a sense of community. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. And so in, instead of being or individual, and part of that too is about enhancing one's mana. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because you have this little knowledge now, and how what do you do with that knowledge? Yeah, and so I find um, I find those things lacking at the moment um, with a lot of our, our tamariki mukupuna because they they don't go healing. Mm. They don't know what even they don't know what watercress looks like. Mm. And I'm going really. How do you not know about autocross? Mm. Okay, but a lot don't know. So uh, part of that is too is the sharing of um, the knowledge, yeah, to teach them, yeah. And I know when I'm sitting with a queer and Kroa, I learn so much from their experiences, yeah. What about yourself? Um, I always think that came out of here. <coughs> something to teach us every day. Yeah, every day is a good day when you sit by them. Mm. Um, I think they have so much mato mm. now, but they're. Um, I think they're. But if you who they share it with, mm. so there's those little barriers up. But if you can get through those barriers and have that cordial with them, then just sit. Even you might not even talk to them. Just sit and listen. Mm. You know that those are barriers that will come down sooner or later. Yeah. And then you've got their whole. You know the whole ears, the eyes, <laughs> and everything looking. And they they talk. Yeah. They talk how how we're talking. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I embrace every day with mm. them. Um, I look forward to seeing them all the time. I didn't think when I did this program, I didn't think that um, I'd learn too much of them because, as you said, as we grew up, we had them all around us. We had mm. all our nans and you know, with us. But I think we took it for granted that they were there, and then mm. one one day they weren't. Mm. So now you're, it's like trying to get that matauranga back that they tried to teach us that we took for granted. Mm. You know and. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, to utilise our kaumatu in a way of respect, uh, a way of afi mai afi atu. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, just make sure they're present. Yeah. And the kōrero, in the wire, you know, just make sure they're there all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how I... Yeah, they are a basket yeah. of treasure. Mm. They are a basket of treasure. And it's interesting that um, when we... <laughs> one of the downfalls that I had... Um, when I was a little bit younger, not too much younger, mm. it was only about 10 years ago, one of my aunts um, from uh, Martin Borough, my dad's side, very knowledgeable, um, but she took two days to answer a question that could be answered in 30 minutes, okay? Um, and then I used to get whole hard with her. <laughs> and said, Come on, just, just tell me the answer. What I wasn't realising that was she was talking to me about a process. Mm. Yeah, I didn't realise that. I just wanted a quick Straight thing. there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mucking around. Yeah. I ain't got time to waste. Mm. Um, but that was my downfall. Yeah. Yeah. And what I learned was I need to sit and listen. Yeah. It's their story, not for my convenience. Mm. It's allowing them their space. That's right. Because what they would do, and I, I'm reminded of a, a colouring book. You get a colouring book and it's got nothing in it. It's, you've got to colour it in, right? Um, so I'd colour in a quarter of the um, page where they wanted to colour in the whole page because each different colour, what they put on the page, meant something different. Mm. Yeah. And it's about allowing that time. So don't, if you've got a queer or koroa that um, you're sitting with and you get hoha, don't get hoha. Mm. Um, learn to be patient. Mm. Yeah, don't rush and, the process. Yeah, and take things in um, as they are colouring in um, the picture mm. in front of you because, as I said, each different shade has a different meaning mm. and it's not until you sit and observe and then start to understand then you become 
um, more knowledgeable instead of being rushed. So anyway, and you talked about um, part of your job is to go into homes and have a look at their um, how warm they are if they meet the government standards for uh, warm houses. Yep. What else do you do? Um, to see if they're safe in their homes. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, it means that whether they're not getting abused within whānau, okay. yeah. that could look like um, mokopuna having an addiction, yeah. uh, taking their cards on a payday, not rocking up and just taking them, yeah. uh, intimidating their nan or their karawa for their card. I, yeah. I know a few of them are a bit scared, but they don't want to talk about it because it's, yeah. you know, whakama yeah. to them. So they say nothing yeah. until you bring it up, that subject, and then they'll have, the, have that little tongue, yeah. and then they'll open up to you. Yeah. So it's not about uh, bringing the police in, it's about giving them tools mm. as a whānau and bringing the whānau in, the, the whānau whānau to bring them in mm. and have that kōrero and say, oi, this is what's happening mm. to our nan. Yeah. I'm glad you used that word whakama, because mm. I have a, a different um, definition of whakama. Um, most people... When they talk about fucking my, it's about shame, right? Mine is a little bit different. Um, mine goes like this: If I use the word, take the word fucker, it means to do something, right? Yep. Ma uh, can mean a few things. We know that song. Ma is mm. white. Fero is red. Ma is white. Ma can be shortened for the word marama, knowledge and understanding. So, how I define it is. If a person is in a, a state of whakama, it is my job to bring understanding to them mm. or to the situation. Okay, So it's not about the person really, it's about um, who's in that situation. Mm. It's about those around them coming together to enlighten that person. Mm, so that that person is able to see a different perspective and then move, mm. or the family is able to see actually... This isn't right. Mm. They come out of that. So the responsibility is the communities mm. uh, to bring understanding to the situation. So, yeah, I I understand what you're saying to that. We need more people to mm. go, hang on, tai hoa, tai hoa. Mm. This is what's happening, Nan. Koro, this is what I see. How do we move for, for mm. you that you may be safe? Mm. So that's my take on Fokama. Mm. Mm. It's our responsibility. Yeah. And so, where do you go with those? You just work with the family in terms of um, bringing them to that place of maramatanga. Yeah, it's just um, giving them the tools and um, letting them give, giving back to uh, Tino Ranga Tanga with them. Mm -hmm. So giving them the stance to do what they want to do within the Fano. Yeah. It's not really up to me, we'll have that all, but mm. it's the whānau's decision at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. And you give the autonomy back to the whānau, they feel a bit more... Um, Empowered? Uh, yeah, took a toe. So, yeah. 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 And it is about empowerment. Mm. Yeah. And again, it goes back to what you said before about mana enhancing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Te whaka mana. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting because the word that I come up with at the moment is uh, manaki. Um, so I have a different uh, perspective on the word manaki as well. Um, we know that manaki um, can mean support, mm. but for me it's mana, you know, mana is esteem, aki, with the return of. Mm. Yeah, so it's about us returning their mana to them. Yep. Yeah. And not doing things for them and making them mm. dependent on us, no, but I, making them to be interdependent. Uh, yeah, enabling them yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That is awesome. What else do you do in your uh, mahi? Um, I try and take them out. Like uh, last year, after COVID, when it settled a little bit, I organised a um, dinner out for them. Oh, nice. So we went down to Kaina Eatery. Oh, yep, yep, down yeah, to None of them had been there because some of them don't even cross over that, you know, that waited up a line or Karatan must <laughs> Yeah. So we took a bus. Um, one of my our my co-workers, uh, Michelle, she towed up in that space too to yeah. carry them yeah. on the pahi. And the ones that couldn't get up on the pahi, I took them on the car. Nice. So I um, jacked up Sophronia and her brother Kepa for <laughs> live entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Rawe, kura, yeah, uh, Rawe. Mm, <laughs> uh, oh, they enjoyed it. They yeah. loved it. So we had a, like a little buffet. Kai had that interaction with um, 
Shelley Dreesen, yep. regarding what kind of high they'd like. Oh, nice. That was put back to the kaumātua, what kind of high they would like. So, mm. And we all know their kaumātua ain't big either, so, mm. you know, a bit of a salad, a bit of a steak, because they can't get steak these days, do yeah. they? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's all they wanted, and a bit of a pudding, and they were happy with all their live entertainment. And yeah. I haven't done nothing like that as yet, but I've got a, um, a rope we starting up, and it's to do with um, my kaumātua's... Um, Enhancing our hapu mama. Oh, yeah. Talk, talk about that. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I've got a program that's uh, meant to kick start in a couple of weeks. So it's Komato coming in to Totoko, um, our, our hapu mama that may be disconnected from her whanau. They're here, but they don't fuck up to our Okay. Um, they're just disconnected. So, yeah, it's that nanny and nanny or mokopuna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, give and take. Uh, concept. So yeah, that's what we're looking at. That is beautiful. Mm. That is so beautiful, uh, because I know that for some mama um, the, who aren't from this mm. here, um, they got no one to support that's them. That's right. No one to support them. No one to teach them about the things. I was talking to one um, mama yesterday, uh, Puka, and I said to you, the differences between when a grandparent does something as opposed to a parent, because we do things differently is because we already read the book. Mm. You're learning to read the book, mm. but we've already read the book. <laughs> she said, but that doesn't mean to say you give them two ice blocks. Mm. <laughs> no, it, it actually does mean yep. that. And so that is such a beautiful program, mm. um, giving them that knowledge and making also the uh, queer yeah. uh, feel valued. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's giving got a part the to too. Yeah. Yep. She's got another part to play because yep. we've, in the last couple of decades has lost that. Yeah. You think that once they're 65, a queer koroa, that's it. No, mm. no, 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 no. It's just another phase in development. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. That's a, yeah, that's an awesome mm. program. And so uh, that's going to start in a couple of weeks? Yeah, we're hoping to kick it off. So we kicked it off about a month ago just to interact with the Hapi Mama and the Kaumatu of what it might look like within their space. Yeah. Uh, they want to do, the Hapi Mama want to do uh, weaving. Okay. Uh, cooking skills. A lot of them have yeah. got cooking skills. Yeah. So a basic grill and a breed, a uh, fry breed, even a boiler. You know, they haven't got those skills. Yeah. Because they were never taught it. I know. I know we can laugh, but <laughs> no, yeah, I, we were brought I up with those skills. Yeah, but, that's right. You know, the, the mothers today haven't got those skills, so it's easier to drive through McDonald's. Mm. Yeah. And grab a happy meal for their kids just yeah. to keep them quiet a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When just down the road, there's a creek. In yeah, the, that's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I hear what you're mm. saying with that. I hear what you're saying with that. And because um, part of my thoughts also is t- in terms of um, some of the queer that you have, you know, they could even start uh, writing out some recipes for them. Yeah, absolutely. So we were looking at um, getting recipes done on cards and putting them at the front of our reception. Yeah, yeah. You know, putting the queer's name to them and then putting the Hapu Mama name on. And just doing those things so everyone could take them away. Yeah, absolutely. And utilise them. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that. Mm. I hear that. And as you said, there are people that don't know how to cook. So there's some who know how to cook. So let's utilise yeah, those skills. Yep. Weaving, mm. whatever, you know. Making, like I remember back in the day where, um, where people who – didn't have much money, would go to, um, these are mamas, uh, would go to the Salvation Army, uh, grab some old shirts, and then redo them. Yeah. But they had, I think it was, um, oh, there was a, a group that was Amatete Mission. Yes. Used to Oxford do that. Street. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oxford Street. They used to teach them how to sew, um, or a lot of different other skills as well, but that was one of the skills that they taught them so that they could... Um, Redesigned those clothes, mm. you know, it was was great mm. for them because it was so cheap. You know, we there isn't hardly any money out there. Yeah, we know that, and the garments that you buy now are dear. Mm. Yeah, so you could go, as I said, get a shirt from um, Salvation Army or whatever. Your koro or your yeah, name. That's mm. right. <laughs> that's passed on. Yeah, remembrance. You'd have a few yep. of those, mm. eh, Anthony? <laughs> What yep. shoots? Shoots that need remodelling. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
It's interesting you say about Amatete because that was an awesome place for young people, eh, to um, to learn skills and you know that might not have had that connection with their yeah. Fano. Um, yeah, we almost need to get back to those basics again, don't we? Really, we do, mm. we do, and so that's why I'm thinking. Well, wow, there's so much that you can mm. do in your program. Mm. They've identified a few things, but there's so much more things that mm. they could, you know. Making fry bread, mm. as you said, we take it for granted because mm. we've been taught. Mm. Um, or even gardening. I mean, yeah, yeah. To the basics. Marakai. <laughs> yeah. So marakai. we have a marakai uh, tumapu here. Okay. So we um, got funded about 900,000 seeds, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we put a garden down out there. Nice. Not on the marae, it's on another bit of whenua. Okay. But we can take our kaumatua or uh, someone can take their, their hapu mama yep. or mm. just their whanau out there just to, you know, to look after. Uh, yeah, just yeah. manaki and chaki in that space. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. just teaching them how to grow and yeah. mm. be self-sufficient a little bit more. I know a lot of people complain that. I haven't got time for that. You, you make time. Mm. Our tupiners make time. Yeah, yeah. Or we haven't got the water, we don't want to do that because we want tank supply. Well, our tupiners didn't have tanks. Yeah, exactly. But they, they made mm. it and they made yeah. big gardens. Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. little excuses. Yeah. Mm. Don't give me excuses, give me mm. solutions. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, as you're talking about that, I was remembering when we were at mm. school, at Te Ori Ori School, country school, <laughs> you learn how to garden. Mm. Mm. You learn how to garden. And so, and I know that in COVID, just before COVID, we were shut down. The, I know the nurses around here, they were inundated with people coming in to buy plants. Mm. And for those who want to um, have a veggie garden, it's coming up to uh, Labor Weekend. That's usually the time for this area yep. uh, to plant. Mm -hmm. So consider uh, planting because it's going to be helpful when it comes um, to harvesting yep. time. It's going to be helpful for you, even if it's just a few plants. Okay, you still have a koi, mm -hmm. and you still be a lot cheaper. Yeah, so they are good programs to to have. Yeah, yeah, they are good activities to have. Weaving is an interesting one as well. Yeah, it is. You know, making different things because yeah. then you can sell them. Yeah, komatsu we love them in it because they like doing it with their hands. Yeah, to keep them active because they have a lot of arthritis in them. Yeah, so even with that little bit of movement. Yeah. Uh, they can utilise that their hands without um, stiffening up and yeah, you know, just sitting in their mummy tonga. So yeah. yeah, and plus with that, they're sitting down talking, mm. they're sitting interacting. Great. Anything else that you ones um, do? Um, or what might be some of the ideas that other ideas that you might have for the group? Um, at the moment, I'm just trying to get out who's who and my co so I can utilise these skills within yeah. the program. See what they have. Yeah. Making a database. Yeah, absolutely. Skills. So yeah. So a lot of them have got um ukulele uh skills. Uh, <laughs> one's got uh cooking, yeah. uh making bread, uh, you know, all that good stuff. Another is a qualified chef actually. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. he said he'll come in and, and do preserves and all of that with them. Oh nice. When our garden takes off a little bit more. Yeah. With, so we don't need to waste it. They yeah. waste that kai do the preserves and, yeah, do it all up and just have that stuff in the pātaka so yeah. the whanau can uh, take away and use without going to uh, Woolworths or Countdown and spending $7 on a jam. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And there's so many plum trees out there. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so many. And plum jam's delicious. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I was picking up what you said about exercise. Mm. You know, so... so um, where are some of the places that your uh, queer koroa go uh, for exercise? What's what's there for them? Oh, I've got one came out too, and she's eighty-five. I think she she goes to uh, five eighteen. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> every morning she has to go to yeah. So yeah, goes to the old gym at uh, five eighteen, and yeah, she works it out. Oh, you that, know? That, that is cool. Yeah, that so, cool. but a lot of them go to um, St. Matthew's Church. Okay. Mm. So they get yeah. in there and they do that uh, cheer aerobics. Yep. Uh, uh, might They might play a little bit of uh, fuddy housey. Yeah. But it's just the interaction at yeah. the end of the day, that's what they need. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see they uh, sit alone all day and TV doesn't cut it for them half yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I hear what you're saying because I go to uh, City Fitness and um, there are. 
I see around about five Amadi, yep. um, who are seven, in their seventies. Yep. There, pumping it out. I'm going, wow. Yeah, that is cool. And I even see some Pacifica. Yeah, uh, one of the ministers from um, the AOG. He goes there, yeah. and also see some Indians. Um, they go there as well. And so, wow. Mm. You know, I want to be like them when I'm their yeah. age and older. You know. Still pumping it yeah, out. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. Kemato are living longer these days, eh? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So what we presumed is, old oh, back in the day when our nans passed, you know, that was our age now, so yeah. that well, wasn't old. Yeah. And it's but, not yeah, old. it's not old. But, yeah, yeah, we just perceived it was old. Yeah. So we just went, oh, well, never mind, you know. Yeah, yeah. Kāroha. Yeah. But then you get to that age and you're like, hell no, you know. <laughs> yep. Let's get to the gym. Let's do something. Let's do some whakapakari tēnana. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as I say in one of my um, kōrero, uh, 60 is the new 40, mm. 80 is the new 60. Yep. So you can do that if you put things in yep. place. Absolutely. Before. Yep. Yeah, I listened to one um, sports science professor, and he said, when you're 40, you should be looking at uh, when you're 80. He said, Go to the gym. Yep. That's when you go to the gym. That's when you get, start prepping up for yep. your old age. Because he said, when you get to 65, because you're going, I can't lift as much mm. as I used to, don't worry about that. All you need to do is just lift a cup of tea. That's right. That's all you need to do. Yep. All you need to do is lift your feet. Yeah. He said, you don't worry about those 200 kilos or whatever. Yep. He said, if you can do something like that, fine. But he said, it's about when now, when you're 80, when you're 65, now mm. when you're 80, you can still do those things. Not as much, uh, but you don't need help mm. lifting a cup of tea. Yeah, so Susie, there's still a um, place for you. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying um, you know, when you're saying about, um, you know, when people retired, they were like, you, you used to think they were so old, but mm. now it's... Um, there's so many more things like the gyms. I don't think were around back in those days either. Mm. Um, so the, you can't say that there's nothing for you to do because there's uh, swimming at the um, CLM, which is fantastic. Mm. I think they do exercises down they do water three times aerobics, a week. Mm. which is great for um, keeping your joints moving and not putting too much pressure on your bones and stuff like that. Um, there's just so many options as older people. I mean, as you know, when you go to the gym, there's there's the rowing machine, there's the, the walking machine, the cycling machine. There's a machine for everything, for every body part, and you yeah. don't have to go hard out. You just have to, yeah. um, you know, just get there. Yeah. There was a woman on... Um, the news a few nights ago. She was in her eighties. Uh, yes, she don't I've just taken. That. She yeah. don't just started off at the gym, eh? And she was like, yeah. Um, yeah, she was pumping out more than some of these young people. <laughs> yeah. So, as we know, young people like to go to the gym to have a look and mm. <laughs> <laughs> do a bit of exercise. And but um, yeah, she was hard out, yeah. that lady. And I think she, she was, was a, a newbie, eh? Yeah. Seventy, she started. Yeah. She was eighty something, eighty three, I think. Yeah, and such yeah. an inspiration for younger people to um, to achieve something yeah. later on in life yeah. as well. Yeah, um, I have a, a similar person at CLM, um, or Bill Gravia it is now. He's he's just about 80, and he's ripped. Mm. And I'm going, wow, look at you, mate. Mm. Yeah, look at you. He goes, oh, you know, um, this year I'm doing this and this and this, going to this place in the end, so mm. I have to be fit for that. have to go for walks. Yeah, it's a mindset, um, eh? Yeah, it's a mindset. Yeah, that we didn't have back then, or mm. our, our nans and papas didn't have back then. Yeah. Mm. But they mindset. instill it now yeah. to themselves because of their ho ho yeah. holder. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's probably fun if you want to uh, stay on the seat for a bit longer. Hey, yeah, move it or lose it. Move it or lose it. Mm -hmm. So even like for say for us um, at Age Concern, we have serious yoga classes mm -hmm. there at Cole Street on a Monday and a Thursday, and um, that's an accredited. Um, Fitness program, mm, ACC of, approved. ACC approved, mm, yeah. Mm. And so, and it's m like in the chairs and all that mm, kind of stuff. Mm. And so, we've seen people walk in there shuffling, and we know that people who um, shuffle is more likely that they'll trip, yep, fall and break their hip mm. or break something. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that's what it was developed for: strength and balancing class. And so, yep, there's that option available. Also, there are a lot of line dancing classes out there as well. Mm. Yes, there is. Yeah, and what we know for Māori, most of them anyway, love to dance. Love to dance. Love to dance. So there's that option there. You know, don't make excuses. Mm. Give me solutions. Yeah. There's a walking group. There's a walking group, and, yeah. And um, just a general fitness class, I think, too. We run those as well, so. Yeah. 
lots of options out there, which is really good because I think if you start on one thing, you might start with the walking and then build up yeah. to, to the exercise. And it's all about socialising mm. um, yeah. and having a corridor when you're doing your exercise as well. Yeah, as mm. you said, you might start off with walking mm. and then next minute you're talking to someone there and then they might be going swimming mm. or going to that um, aqua aerobics. Mm. Would you like to join? Sure, let's go. Mm. Or, but if I stay at home, that's never going to happen. That's mm. right. Or just thinking about it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I think, you know, as you get older too, you start, um, you know, thinking about the past a little bit too much. Mm. And it's good to move forward and to create those new memories for yourself because um, we know that music is fantastic for mm. us as we get older as well. Yeah. Music, um, conversation, and exercise, a great combination of, uh, you know, getting your wairua, wairua up and running and yeah. Yeah, kick start. And all of that is about wairua tanga, mm. Mm. connectedness. Even if you want to go for a walk through the ngahiri, mm. you know, or at the beach, yeah. you know, thinking yeah. about things um, of what used to be reflecting on mm. and, and how do I make this better. Um, and also um, what I want to emphasise also is that for queer and koroa, and I'm saying this from a personal um, perspective, yeah. <laughs> we are um, the models for our mukupuna tamariki. Mm. And so if we model a, a particular kind of behaviour, they will learn from yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So we model um, haora. We model wairuatanga. Mm. And so that they know that it's normal. Yeah, like you said, Davi, when we, when our kui and koroa died back in the day, we said, oh, that was it. Mm. No, that's not it. Mm. Yeah, that's not it. There's something more. And so let's get back to that. That's something more. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's my thought on it. Mm. We are the models. So let's be positive models for our next generation. And doesn't only have to be in terms of um, fitness or anything like that. Any gift that you have, okay, any treasure that you have. Uh, there was this um, vakatoki that said, and this is in um, English, if you have an older person in the house, you have a treasure in the house. Mm. But that treasure will only um, become useful if you use it. Otherwise, it would just be an ornament. Mm. Mm. So, if you have a gift, share it with your mukupuna. Mm. Share it with your tamariki. So that they then too can share that with their mukupuna and tamariki. Who can share that then with their um, tamariki and mukupuna. So that your gift will live. You know? And the reason why I say that is I remember my papa. Very good cook. Very good. Um, but if I don't teach my children how to cook like him, and I will never be able to cook like because he was just awesome. Yeah. Um, but they won't know how to cook, mm. as we said before. Yeah, People the skills are for nothing. The skills mm. are for nothing. Mm. They're dead. No, it's our job to keep them alive. It's interesting, yeah. eh, because I know a lot of young people are on their phones and they might even look up recipes or how to do stuff, you know, from someone else doing it. But it's so much more different if you're actually in the room with that person mm. doing something um, and sharing and having a few jokes and, um, yeah, actually being part of it um, apart from, you know, rather than watching it online and on your phone and stuff like that. It um, seems to have taken over everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Really? Plus, so the other part people. of that we see is that uh, when you start interacting with the Mukupuna Tamariki, um, that you become a part of their world mm. and they become a part of your world and that they see that you are accessible. So, in times of need, they'll come to you because they know that they can talk to you mm. because of what you set up um, just by teaching them how to cook. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Just and that's just life skills, full stop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really well, not is. the role models, then who is? Mm, that's right. And we said, too, kind of tainer. Mm. We learn from the older people, mm. and the older people learn from the younger pe person as well. Yep. Yeah, because it, it helps them see through a different um, perspective. Mm -hmm. I was just singing that song that they sang in Uncle's Tongue, Lace Covered Window. <laughs> if I move through the thing through that mm. lace covered window, the lace could be uh, a barrier, and where I can't see. Or the lace could be something beautiful where I see um, parts of something that's going to be even more beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I love that song. Very spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> Just a good experience at Uncle's Tongue. Because that was their um, whanau, the one whanau's uh, national anthem. 
Yeah. yeah, the lace covered windows. It's a shame, isn't it? Because at <coughs> Tangi and uh, funerals, we learn so much more about the person that's passed, and if we spent the time to actually have um, been with them through their journey or um, listened to them sharing their journey, um, yeah, it's a, a time missed, isn't it? Really, it really or an is. experience missed. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So you know, make sure that we, uh, yeah, we get on. We um, we have got those conversations, share experiences, because I know when you're doing something with your hands, like cooking, you, you're talking as well, and you might not be talking about the cooking. You're talking about another experience of someone doing this mm. cooking, and it, and it becomes a huge, big conversation of lots of information and lots of learning and lots of laughter, which is good for us yeah. as well. Lots of learning, love. <laughs> Sometimes the, uh, I've done this a couple of times where I've allowed something to happen, um, like say for instance cooking. They've we're meant to put just a, a teaspoon in, or they'll put a tablespoon in. But I've allowed it. I've seen it happen. <laughs> but I've allowed it uh, again to give them an experience of. So what did you do? How did you come to this place where mm. this tastes like this? What did you do that wasn't? You were meant to do because then they start learning how to problem solve, mm. and then they starting to learn how to reflect and adapt. Mm. If they don't know how to do that, then when they come into situations where they find it hard, they'll go back to something that may not be positive mm. in the way that they deal mm. with it, but rather a negative way. Mm. Yeah, so. Is that sort of like building a bit of resilience as well and mm -hmm. um, strategizing and all yeah. those sorts of things? Because I think we rush forward too much, don't we, without thinking about what consequences might be? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that ACC ad that's coming on, you know, uh, if I do this, who's going to look after my... Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's, gonna, who's bringing in the money? And then because people rush, eh? Yeah. And they're saying, you know, springtime, uh, everyone's out uh, painting or doing this, that and the other. Uh, are you reflecting on how dangerous that could be? Are mm. you in too much of a hurry? Because I know that even as I've got older, I'm doing like five or six things mm. at once and, you know, I'll be halfway through the vacuuming and I want to do something else because I see something else. And um, But you're not rushing. You're not slow thinking. down. Yeah, yeah, slow down and just take your time. Yeah. Think of the consequences. <laughs> do you remember that song, um, Feeling Groovy? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that song, Dobby? <laughs> Anyway, uh, anyway, Fano, uh, Davi, thank you so much for coming in today. Um, what was 15 minutes turned into? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a delight to have you on our program today. Um, so, um, people, as as we start off on the new week, have a great time, have a great week. Mm. See how the, how you can enhance someone's life just by being there. Mm. Yeah. You don't have to say much, um, but that what you say may be fruitful, that they may enjoy a harvest uh, when they need that harvest. So from us, uh, Aging with Attitude, have a great day from you, Susie. Yeah, have a great uh, have a great week. I think Daylight Savings is finished or starting in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you're aware of that. I'm just loving the mornings and um, being in bed early, and it's like 6.30. I don't have to rush to get up. I can hear the birds singing and, you know, it just really changes your whole um, outlook, eh, when the sun's shining and, and the day is calm, like this morning after all that wind last night. Yeah, um, yeah so, yeah, make every day a new day. Yeah. Yeah, and Dobby? Mauri ore kia koutou i te whanau, o te wairarapa. No, my hurry, my kitchen wiki ho, I know, my here to my fun. Kia ora, hey, good night.